happening. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, no, see, that's going to start things. People are going to come and go, oh, she likes Wooten. And uh, then people are going to send me Wheaton Terriers. All kinds of things are going to happen. Uh, thanks a whole lot. That's back at you. And um, I feel really, really good today, I'm, I'm, uh, which is amazing. I woke up not feeling so good. I woke up with a little uh, crink in my neck, a little crick. I was arguing. I have no idea if it's a, a crick or a creak or a crickin'. Cricket. <laughs> I have pain in my neck. I woke up and my neck was just bad. It was just, you know how you just wake up and your neck is, and I, what am I doing? And my, I was laying down, I thought. I was, I wake up and my neck, what could have happened in my sleep? That I, my, was I dreaming I was carrying a refrigerator? Was, uh, it felt like I dreamt that I was on the phone all night long talking like that. And then I hung up and played the violin for a little while. That's, that's how I woke up, like that. How can eight hours of laying down make you sore? How can you wake up instead of refreshed like that? What happens? And that's how long uh, they say we should sleep is eight hours and uh, longer if you're a teenager. So I guess uh, thinking everybody else is stupid takes a lot of energy. And uh, um, <laughs> um, I feel like if you're going to be in bed that long, you got to have a comfortable bed. People hem and haw about beds, and there are expensive beds out there, but I say that's, that's where you spend your money. You know, you spend a third of your life in a bed. It should be a comfortable bed. And if you're going to buy a bed, you go to those stores, there is no way to really, that's a very important decision. People spend more time buying a car than a bed. You can't just go to one of those stores and they bright, bright lights and you just are expected to lay down and go, yeah, this is the bed for me. You know, you can't, you've got to really try it out and leave your inhibitions at the door. I go in, I'll ask them, can you dim the lights, would you mind? Because I, I uh, and if they don't, I'll wear an eye mask. I'll put on my eye mask. I'll try different positions. I want to lay in bed the way I lay in bed. Don't be shy, you know, and, and BYOB, bring your own blanket. And uh, yeah, because you, you want to you lay on it and feel like, because sometimes you want to sleep with one leg outside of the blanket, you know, because you absorb the cool air. You don't want to com completely commit to both legs out of the blanket. You want to have one leg in the blanket. And uh, it's important to spoon. I'll ask the manager to come on over. The, the beds for everybody. Some people like a soft bed. Some people like a firm bed. Some people like the firm bed with the pillow top, so it's firm but soft. Those are the people I believe have combination skin. And uh, <laughs> I don't understand the craftmatic bed, the, the bed that actually you just push a button and it eventually completely adjusts to this. <laughs> we have something like that. It's called a chair. You know, there, who, I, can you imagine wanting to sleep in this position, like? And what if, it, maybe it's for watching TV, but what, you know, you fall asleep watching TV some, and then you wake up, and then you'd have to walk around like this all day long, going, those are nice shoes. Is that a dime I see? I, I can't imagine that that's how you'd be, then, then I would have to try to dance in this position. Make me try to dance in this position, Tony. <laughs> Do you like a soft bed or a firm bed or what? It's funny, I just got one of those firm ones with the pillow tops. 
So, you did? Yeah, I just got it a couple weeks ago. Now, some of them, then you have to get an extra special fitted sheet because it's higher. Yeah. I those mattresses now, when, stuck, yes, when I was growing huge. up, they were tiny little thin mattresses. Right. The mattresses now are gigantic. Yeah, it's sort of all added up because I had to go buy the sheets and it's like another big thing altogether. That's but, how they get you. Yeah, <laughs> that's how they sting, yeah. <laughs> but I'm getting used to it. Yeah. And now, do you sleep a lot? Do you sleep eight hours? No, I don't. Probably like six max. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I like I like the sleep. Yeah. I do enjoy it. I can't stay awake. Part, I can't go to sleep longer than six hours. Oh, I could. <laughs> I can't. I could. <laughs> oh man! All right. Um, on the show today, who can turn the world on with a smile? Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> Revisited. It's on May 11th at 9 o'clock on CBS. This is the new TV guide with a never-before-seen uh, photo. It's on the cover, and uh, look at that picture. How in, how is her hair staying like that? <laughs> there is no way you can be in that position and your hair stays like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> also, Rosie Perez is on the show. She was uh, nominated for an Oscar from Fearless, and uh, she's on one of the last episodes of Frasier, and, uh, and she's, uh, she's fantastic. Also, uh, the Hala Awards. Uh, we're... Yeah. Today, we'll be giving a Hala Award. We're encouraging people to do nice things for others, and later in the show, we're going to have another reenactment from the Ellen DeGeneres reenactors. Again, they're not actors, they're reenactors. Uh, <laughs> And I think you'll really appreciate this, uh, this Hala Award. It's, it's one of my favorite reenactments so far. And that's later in the show. Um, also, if you think the finale of Friends is going to uh, be big this week, wait till you see our big finish. It's bigger. <laughs> hey, remember uh, I was telling y'all about the baby birds that I had to move. I was doing some construction on the house, and I was waiting and waiting, and the mother had babies in there, and I had to move the birds, which you're never supposed to do, by the way, ever. But I had to, or else the babies would have died. So uh, we took the baby birds that were just born to a bird specialist, and uh, they are now either, like she said, thinks between 14 to 16 days old. And look at the pictures of the baby birds. That's one of them. Oh. Going, holla. <laughs> Thank you for moving us. That's one of them. That was one nest, and uh, the other one had four in it. Oh. They're going, who's that? Um, <laughs> and in a couple of weeks, she's going to bring them back to the house, and we're going to release them back on my property so that they can keep having little birds next season. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, hey, we started a new segment uh, that, uh, you know, there are people out there with a lot of different types of talent, and so we want to show videotapes of our viewers performing different unique talents, and so we started a segment called, How Come You're Not on TV? somebody who's uh, multi-talented. This is Charlotte Morrison from Nashville, Tennessee. Tennessee. And now, it's not just one talent. She sends us a tape, and uh, she's, she's got several talents on here. Just take a look.
triple threat. Uh, she, uh, that's what we're looking for. I mean, nothing fancy. It doesn't have to even really be talent. It's just something that's good, clean, fun, and you can log on to our website if you have some, some tape you want to send in. We are looking for that, that exact thing. That's exactly what I'm talking about, Charlotte. All right, uh, and again, another segment. We have so many segments on the show. We're like an orange. Um, <laughs> uh, this is called, uh, What's Your Two Cents? It was short and Alrighty, so uh, this is people giving us ideas for the show. It's not like what's on your mind. That's just people telling us all kinds of random things. This is specifically to do with the show. Angie Nicholas from Graham, Washington. Hi, Ellen. I notice sometimes after you're finished dancing that you put your feet up on the guest chair as you sit. I wonder uh, if some, not saying all, but some guests may be opposed to having to sit where your shoes just were. My suggestion <laughs> would be to offer a sanitary seat cover like they offer in public restrooms. <laughs> Merely a suggestion, love your show. Thanks, Angie, Nicholas, Graham, Washington. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who, who would put a, a, a toilet seat cover on a chair? That's ridiculous. This, this is a classy show, and with classy guests, we wouldn't put a tacky toilet seat cover on a beautifully upholstered uh, chair like this. We actually attach them directly to the guest. Uh, uh, <laughs> there's Tom Hanks right there. Um, Tom Hanks dancing, of course, and uh, it works out better that way, so we don't have to. Um, all right, and uh, number two, we get um, Becky Fields from Gainesville, Florida. And uh, dear Ellen, your wheel of greetings is missing one very important greeting, DAP, D-A-P. DAP is the first handshake when you dap your fist top to bottom, bottom to top, then straight on. I'm a middle school teacher, and this is a very important greeting. I don't want you to be out of touch. Thanks, Becky. All right, bring on that wheel over here. What uh, goes up must come down. Spinning wheel. Hey, thanks a lot. No, it's, it's, it's up, down, then that way. All right. Get in touch. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. All right, so we'll have to cover up one of these things. I like each and every one of them. It's hard, but I think uh, we, no one really has the time for the two-cheek kiss, so we'll put it over the... Two cheek kiss, so now we have DAP officially on there. All right. All right, and uh, Jerry Johnson from Woburn, Massachusetts. We love your show. We tape it and watch it at dinner. One thing, though, before the commercial break, you always say, when we get back, guest star will be sitting right here. Well, he, she won't. You have to introduce them first. I know it's nitpicky, but you did ask for my two cents. <laughs> Jerry Johnson. You're absolutely right. Uh, so uh, technically, I didn't realize I had to be so specific. Uh, don't go away. Uh, when you come back, I'm going to be standing next to the wheel of greeting, and uh, you'll hear applause for a minute, and then that'll die down, and I'll introduce Mary Tyler Moore, <laughs> figuring out what kind of greeting, and then she's going to walk out, and then we're going to say hello to each other, and then she's going to sit down, and we'll start talking. So don't go away. All right. Now it's time for a segment that we like to call the Hala Awards. <laughs> If you don't know, this is a segment where we give a shout out to people who perform random acts of kindness. So we've asked you at home to write into our website and tell us about those do-gooders that you know who deserve a holla award. And uh, here's an email that we got. Um, I just want to remind you that these are real emails. We're not tampering with these. The last reenactment, real email. This is a re real email. Um, dear random acts of kindness. I was sick and I had nothing left in the house to eat. My friends were not answering their phones. So I was left to shop at this very busy and stuffy grocery store. I kept passing one guy in particular. Turns out that that guy was parked in front of me and we were both loading groceries at the same time. I turned to put my bag in the car and I heard a loud crash. The guy came running up to me. I said, my spaghetti sauce just broke. Well, I finished loading my car and the guy came rushing to me with the biggest grin. He said, I told the grocery store about your sauce and they told me to grab you another one and it's in plastic. And I just about cried. I felt like I won the Academy Award. <laughs> Seems like a small deal, but it was huge. This guy was the grocery store god. He restored my faith in grocery stores. I hope I have the chance to pass the kindness on. Marilyn Philbrick from Dallas, Texas. And to reenact Marilyn
Ellen story of random kindness, I introduce to you the Ellen DeGeneres reenactors. Dear random acts of kindness, oh, I was sick and had nothing left in the house to eat. My friends were not answering their phones. So I was left to shop at this very busy and stuffy grocery store. I kept passing one guy in particular. Turns out that guy was parked in front of me and we were both loading groceries at the same time. I turned to put my bag in the car and heard a loud crash. The guy came running up to me. I said, my spaghetti sauce just broke. Well, I finished loading my car and the guy came rushing up to me with the biggest grin. He said, I told the store about your sauce. They told me to grab you another one, and it's in plastic. <laughs> and I just about cried. I felt like I won the Academy Award. <laughs> Seems like a small deal, but it was huge. This guy was the grocery store god. He restored my faith in grocery stores. I hope I have the chance to pass the kindness on. <laughs> All right. So I'd like to give a holla award to Maryland's mystery man, the grocery god. Holla! these people look like and then we asked her for a picture look at the likeness between our reenactor and the real Marilyn <laughs> it's uncanny I tell you Rosie Perez joins me right after this we'll be right back hi Mary oh, it's so good to see you again oh it's good to see you too and working again too oh thank you very much it's good to work again God yes. love you oh God love you I, 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 you look fantastic. Thank you, you look so do I. And look, we're even a slightly color for the Yeah. And then, of course, I have the gray pants. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I, I always like I have white on my shoe, just because uh -huh. you have white I on your shoe. I have white on my shoe. We're so similar. I don't know how we're, we're not... We're girlfriends. Yes, we are girlfriends. <laughs> uh, you have been on both of my sitcoms. I, the last time I saw you was on the, uh, the last one. Right. Didn't, didn't do so well. No. No. I tried. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, I tried. You tried to help. It was a little reunion. We had uh, you and Cloris Leachman and Ed Asner. Look at him uh, there. Look at everybody. Ed is Santa. And then Cloris. That really was so funny, that scene. That was that hilarious. Was great. Cloris you weren't having help. such a good time, though, were you? Yes, I was. No. No. I don't think so. It was a bad, yeah. It was an, well, of course, we had to have problems. It's a yes. sitcom. Yes, well, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. So anyway, uh, I'm, I'm so happy to see you. And Thank you. We keep, I keep calling you and saying I'm doing this, and, and I keep say we want to see each other, and then we haven't. You haven't called me once. Liar. <laughs> you have not. I have. When did you call me? I called when I was doing my HBO tour. You and wanted a doctor's reference once, and yeah. I gave it to you. Right. And you returned nothing no. to me about whether you were alive the or HBO, no. I said, come to the HBO thing, and you weren't able to. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So now, th here's, here's the thing. What I, I love that, because someone was asking me before about how I started and how I knew I was going to do this. Um, you went to a Catholic high school that nuns were not really encouraging of this kind of <laughs> profession, <laughs> right? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Eucaria did not think well of a show business career for her girls. I just wanted to be a dancer, and um, it came the... June graduation, and everybody had to go in and be counseled by her personally, privately. It was so scary. <laughs> and I told her that I wanted, as my career, to be a dancer. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me and gulped for air, and then finally said, well, all right, but you're not going to wear one of those tutus, are you? Is that what they call them? Tutus, those short skirts? Oh, that's what upset her? Yes, because yeah. she thought I was going into the ballet, which uh -huh. is... Pretty scary. Right. Right. 
But no, you didn't. You didn't wear a tutu. You wore. So, I, a lot of people don't recognize you for. I mean, Dick Van Dyke show was was huge, and I loved it. And the Mary Tyler Moore show. But some of your best work yes. has not been seen. And we found this tape of you doing a commercial for High Point Appliances. I believe it was Hot Point. Hot Point. Please, Ellen. <laughs> I, I don't have one of them. It's a uh, hot point. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at you here. Okay. Every day is a holiday with hot boys. I'm happy hot boy. Uh -oh. There's a nice looking couple in search of a home. Just wait till they see that hot point kitchen. Tell your dealer you want the dishwasher with that hot point sparkle. <laughs> the senior prom early because that was my first day's work the day after graduating from high school. Wow. At 6.30 in the morning. So that was me. 6.30 in the morning? Yeah. So you were like 18, 17, 18? I was uh, 17. Wow. Yeah. Now that's a nice little outfit. It is, isn't it? Uh -huh. It's charming. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't quite managed the bust situation yeah. well there, you can see. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what is, th this is what I don't understand either. The, uh, on on um, the Dick Van Dyke show, you were f one of the first women on television to, to, this can't be right, to wear pants? Well, on a regular basis as part of my everyday wardrobe, yes. Lucy used to wear pants from right. time to time, but mostly you'd find her vacuuming, wearing high heels right. and a <laughs> floral frock of uh -huh. some sort. And I said, I don't think so. And, um, and since I had no com comedy training, nothing to that I had deserved to win this role on the show, uh, I said to Carl, I want to at least look like a housewife, a real housewife. Right. And I know what they wear, they wear pants. And so I wore pants in the first episode and uh, everybody seemed to like it and CBS said, that's good, that's good. But just make sure she only wears them in one scene per show and that they don't cup under. <laughs> to this day, Carl Reiner doesn't know what cupping under is. Well, <laughs> I I, I still, to this day, don't know what that is. What, do, you, do you know what it is? What is well, yeah, it wasn't that long What is ago. cupping I mean, under? Cupping under means that, this is my microphone, please, um, that it shouldn't cup under. Cup so it under shouldn't there. show the form of your body. The form of your butt, yes. Oh, I see. Wow, that was a big thing then. Can't, yes, it can't was. Can't cup under. Can't do that at all. No. Wow. No. And Especially not in a situation, comedy, in which we were playing that the husband and wife looked like they actually might be attracted to each other. Right. You know, that was, yeah. like, hey, you don't fool around with that. No, no. That's why they made us sleep in twin beds. I, no, it's just so weird to think that Isn't there it? was all that, that they can't, you can't cup under and you're in twin beds. And, right. and you especially can't cup under when you're in the twin beds. No. I know that. We have to go to a commercial. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> it just brings back such good memories. Yes, that, that show made me so happy. Yeah. It just made me so happy to see that show. It made you happy. Yeah. Oh, it made me really, really happy. Yeah. 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 And, and so that must have been fun going back and doing it that really with everybody. It really was. And you know, that's all I wanted to do in my life was to sing and dance. I mm -hmm. never wanted to do any acting. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. <And that's> what, <laughs> and I got to do a little bit of it in those days. It was fun. Oh, it, it looks great. I can't wait to see it. It so really it, is good. So, and, and before we forget, uh, you know, the bird thing we were talking about, the, the baby birds, you were watching that show. Yes. And had a problem similar to... Right. Well... Well, I have a... Well, it's an entirely different problem, but on Easter Sunday, uh, but bird-related. Yes. On, <laughs> on Easter Sunday morning, my golden retriever and miniature schnauzer each brought to me at the kitchen door up in our country house two goose eggs that they had found on our property. And they had these expressions on their faces as though they knew that they had done something weird and not expected and not going to be accepted either. And they kept, they dropped them down on the grass in front of them and looked up as if to say, aren't you going to yell at us? What are we going to do? What are you going to do? One of the eggs was cracked and so that was hopeless, uh, but the other was still warm and my husband went all over the property and found the nest and he put it in. 
But do you not know that the next day they did the same thing? Um, so there were only two left, but we haven't been up in a couple of weeks. We're going up uh, soon, in a couple of days. And did the and dogs we'll stay there when you're not there? No, they go with so us they, everywhere. Okay. So this is something they only do when they get to the country. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what to do. I'll, I don't know, if, I'll you tell know you what if to there's do. some procedure yes. we should take. Yes, there is. Because um, I'm sure other people have, because I guess, obviously, geese lay their eggs in a nest that's on the ground. Right. Uh, or, your birds, or your dogs are climbing trees. Um, so yes, and um, near water. Yes, near water. So you're supposed to build a light temporary fencing around the nest that is big enough for the geese to be able to take off and their wings to to have a wingspan. So just do light temporary fencing around that so that the dog can't jump over it. And uh, also, but the babies, how do they get out of it? Well, to go down to the water with you, their mother. You angle it like if this is the water, you angle it around there, and then the mother, when the eggs hatch, the mother will lead them to the water. Right. So just leave the temporary fencing. I see. So you're doing a like a U towards the water. Toward the water. Right. All right. That's what you do. Okay. And, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure other people have the same problem, right? I think they must. Yeah. Okay. Because there are a lot of geese around. Yeah. They really are. Okay, so that's, we can help you in that way, and okay. always remember to never cup under. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank um, you. I will. All right, uh, this, I, I, I'm telling you, I'm very excited about this. The audience, you're, you're going to love what we're giving you today. Everybody in the audience is getting uh, the first season of the Dick Van Dyke Show. <laughs> present the Hala Award right after this. Don't go away. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Hi. No, Hi. Oh, there. You've got your... Uh, <laughs> they you... told me to bring the shawl just in case it was cold. You know, the headlights and... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with it if you're okay with it. I'm fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think they'll be letting us know if we need to. Uh, I don't think we'll have any aerial shots today, but... Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are, are you cold? Are you fine? We just want you to be comfortable. That's all that matters. I'm fine. All right. So they actually gave you a shawl? Do we sell shawls in the back just in case? <laughs> or did you bring that? No, I, I brought it because, you know, just in yeah. case I go out tonight, you know. Right. That's lovely. I think more shawl, shawls should come back. That's a lovely idea to have a shawl. It's nice. I, I like it. It is. Are, are shawls big right now? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. They are. I have no idea. I am yeah. not a fashion icon by far, so. Right. I have no idea. Well, all I know is, is don't ever cup under. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I know. And that's, if she could have avoided that, Mary, if she would have worn a, 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 maybe a little shawl around her waist, then you wouldn't have seen the cup under. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? <laughs> you will. Okay. All right. <laughs> now, you say that you don't, what do you mean you don't pay attention to fashion? I don't. I think it's like the devil's playground. I really do. I mean, I like clothes and everything fashion like that. Fashion is the devil's playground? I mean, <laughs> You know, you know how people like they 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 spend like uh, fifteen hundred dollars on a panty, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. did, did you did you see panty? <laughs> yeah, on a panty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, certainly you shouldn't spend fifteen hundred dollars on a panty. <laughs> it, it should be a panty. <laughs> for $1,500. Okay, so $1,500 on a Ponte. Ponte. Yes. Um, so, because you shop, is this true? You enjoy shopping at, at Target. Yes, right? I do. Because you, so you like a, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and people are shocked by that. They are. They always say, um, you know, what are you doing at Target? Why don't you uh, send your assistant? I said, then I would have to pay her to come here, so what's the point? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, right. so it's like, I, and I love Target. We call it Target. Target, yeah. Target, Target, Target. <laughs> and do you do it like that? Target, Target, Target. Yeah. Like that? <laughs> and so now you buy everything there? Or what do you buy no, there? No, I don't buy everything there. Just like toilet paper. Um, so you buy in bulk? You I buy, buy in bulk. I buy like Swiffer. I love Swiffer. So do I. Uh, oh, oh. I, we oh. could talk. 
yeah. for hours. Not now. Yeah. Um, uh, Fabrice. Mm hmm I brought some because I heard that you're addicted to this stuff. I am. And, I am. And now, uh, why? I mean, not to say, but I don't know, what, what does it do? Well, it's not that my house stinks or anything like that, but... <laughs> No, really. But I love it because one shot and you're done. Mm, that Look was there. your water right there. Oh. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's nothing dangerous that you couldn't drink, oh. but... Um, and, and so, is it, is it something that you, um... See? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> didn't expect that, oh. but, um... No, but... <laughs> It makes the odors go away. Yeah, a little shot would do you, you uh -huh. know? But no, but you're like, you go through with this a lot from what I understand. Yeah, who told you? I, we do oh, our... oh, oh yeah. Well, so this thing, I love it because I have two dogs, Sammy Samowitz, the little guy, mm -hmm. and Rainy Raindrops, the little fatty fat girl. Uh -huh. Hi guys. Hello, little dogs. Okay. And, um, and so I'm, I'm a... <laughs> yeah. What kind of dogs are they? I, it's an English Sussex Spaniel. Uh huh. Um, the, the, the English Sussex Spaniels came in second in Best of Show. Oh. Yeah. They did? And then I had, and then I have a, a, a pit bull mix. Uh-huh. That's Rainy Droppy Girls. Uh-huh. And they stink. So uh -huh. I sprayed this all around. Uh-huh. And, um, and, and I'm obsessed, because don't you hate going to somebody's house and, and they, it, their house either smells like wet dog, yeah. wet cat, or fried old chicken grease. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no. Those are the three smells, usually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like always sniffing. My sister said, you look like a narcotics officer, you know? Yeah. Because I... Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sorry. No, I didn't do it. I had a, a thingy came out of my nose. Pardon me. Uh, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. We have to take a commercial break, and we'll be right back. I got it. We got the Rosie Perez. Uh, uh, I just want to uh, give a shout out to uh, Sixto and Carmen right now, yes. and uh, her cousins. I, I had to give a shout out to. Thank you um, very much. You're welcome. <laughs> it, it, uh, okay. And um, <laughs> and what were the dogs' names again? Sammy Samowitz and Rainy Raindrops. And hello to you too. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> All right, so this is this is a uh, tonight. You're on the the one of the last episodes of Frasier. That what what is that must have been very emotional, right? Oh, it's extremely emotional. First of all, I'm I'm the, I'm his last bad blind date. It's a privilege. Uh huh. And um and but I also was privileged enough to sit in on the reading of the very final episode, and I was sitting there in front of the craft service. Oh, they have a spread at Frasier. It's gorgeous, right? Yeah. And and um. <laughs> And so I'm eating and eating, and I'm, I'm so, it's slowly dawning on me th that this is the final episode, and it was so touching and so poignant and brilliant. I started crying. I was like, I, I'm serious. I was like one of those Puerto Ricans watching a novella. You know, I was like, <laughs> 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 you know, I was like, don't go, oh, <laughs> don't go. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I turned, and then, and then Kelsey Grammer turned around, and I thought, you know, he's going to be bothered by my antics and his eyes was just streaming with tears and I was like wow oh. I mean it was just really brilliant just to be a part of that yeah what an honor that, that it's such a brilliant show we're yeah, gonna yeah. miss that show gonna miss it yeah now were you, when you were on the set because I this is a big thing everybody on the set when they're waiting around for to, to do their parts everyone's in a knitting here in in Hollywood it's it's like a turned into a, I mean not that everybody isn't but in, in Hollywood there there's a book now this is how famous it is you're in Celebrity Scarves, which is a book, and this is uh, obviously your scarf that you, this is you with your scarf, and then there's... I, I, actually, I crocheted. You, okay. I don't know how to knit. It's too complicated. Oh, really? It, crocheting is easier? Yes. That, and that's the, it looks beautiful. You Thank did a great you. job. Thank you. And uh, this also is uh, a new book that I don't know if you've seen uh, that I'm in. No. It's called Celebrity Mittens, and it's actually... Uh, <laughs> Now, can you crochet a shawl? Could you do something like that? Yes. Yes, I could. Really? Yeah, yeah. I used to um, do it as a child because, believe it or not, I was very hyperactive. No. <laughs> 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 so I, 
So they taught me how to uh, crochet to calm me down. That's a good thing to teach kids, to, to teach, uh, but that's kind of a sharp thing for kids, right? They have to be a certain age. No, no, the crochet is the hook, so it's fine. No, oh, what do I know? All right. Um, <laughs> All I know is that, that we, we care about you so much, and I know how much you love buying things in bulk, and I know how much you love Febreze, that we got you some. And, uh... <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to watch Rosie Perez on Frasier tonight on NBC. The Big Finish is next. Don't go away.